broader market then Dilip Bhatt also joins in uh, Kunal Bhutra is back with us and of course we're talking to Ajay Bagga as well good afternoon gentlemen uh, Dilip your call on the market uh, do you think it's it's a good time to buy or is there a risk of you know the, the global risk of taking the market much lower than the current levels <coughs> well I think the markets from the global perspective remains vulnerable but I think uh, not uh, very vulnerable though so I'm not too worried about what's really going to happen internationally at the moment and going forward in the market itself maybe possibly next 10-15 days possibly there could remain some volatility if markets come down nifty comes down by another 100 150 points not impossible but I think the broader trajectory and the broader channel seems to be upwards and I think over next one year to one and a half year it would uh, do good for the investors if they really buy on the dips because I think over next one one and a half year there's a good amount of money to be made uh, in the markets by picking up some very good stocks and remaining invested in the markets okay by the way uh, just some one more detail on spice jet and the reason why the stock could be moving higher these are very good load factors that the company has reported which is basically capacity utilization per airline and that's gone up to almost 90 percent versus 75 percent year on year remember spice jet has come out with an excellent market stimulation strategy with so many discounts that they've offered and that has helped them bump up their load factors so all in all good set of numbers and if you look at the intraday chart there is a further spike up that we've seen in the last 10 minutes for SpiceJet now at the highest point of trade. Uh, Dilip, hi, afternoon. I know this is a space that you've been a bit wary of, the aviation space, but uh, what would you do with something like SpiceJet? Well, maybe in the short term, over the next couple of months, or next three to six months, uh, very broadly, I think one can play the aviation sector, largely based on the fact that the costs are going to come down. And possibly with the capital infusion, even the interest cost will come down. I, I was talking about the, the gasoline cost. So overall, maybe there is some money to be made. But just one statistics which you just said right now, that spice jet is already operating at 90 to 95%. So I think the further uh, utilization is, doesn't seem to be possible. So only a price uh, increase has to come. Now that always remains a very competitive space for uh, the airline sector. But having said that, yes, I think uh, in the short term, three to six months, yes. But in the long run, I don't think that there's any great money ever to be made in this particular sector. All right, uh, gentlemen, stay on with us. PSU banks, uh, you know, uh, Sonia was making a point earlier that the, the numbers were not really that inspiring. It's just uh, relief that you haven't seen any worsening of asset quality. But is this a good enough reason to buy some of these stocks, given the current valuations? Or uh, would, you, would you stay clear of uh, PSU banks? <clears throat> well, I think these numbers were quite mixed. I think BOI did report uh, a disappointing set of numbers. But by and large, I think everybody has been closely watching the slippage in the asset quality. And I think that has been much better than what people expected for this particular quarter. So in that sense, it's a good relief uh, for people who are tracking uh, the PSU banks. But I think I'm still waiting for, uh, you know, the government finances as they improve and as they try to make some more payments to some of the infra companies who in turn make the payment to the banks. So I think that cycle has yet to start in a very proper way. But government finances are improving and that I think is a very positive uh, news for the PSU banks. So in that sense, I, I have slightly different uh, approach to that. I would still think that the risk return on the risk side, it's uh, limited assuming that there's going to be economic recovery maybe not sooner but uh, gradually for sure so taking that into account i think if you were to take a slightly one and a half two year bet i think psu banks uh, one can make a serious money in this what about dish tv on your list in terms of stocks that you would want to buy now well i think i would still stick to uh, some of the safer names at the moment uh, for example, Larson and Tuvro would still be on my shopping list at the moment and I would still look for a, a reasonable price to buy. Uh, I mean, if it corrects further, then I think certainly it's a stock to buy. Tata Motors is another one company which has corrected quite a bit and I think it's uh, trading much below the 52-week low. So I would be really watching out for that particular company where I think the long-term prospect still continues to be good considering that apart from uh, the Jaguar uh, part of it, uh, even the domestic recovery can somehow uh, can get reflected in the performance. 
So Tata Motors appears to be good. And I think I would still look at some of the pharma names. Something like a Glenmark uh, really would look uh, pretty good and interesting. Cipla would look pretty interesting from the current levels. So some of the few things apart from the private banks like HDFC and Indusin Bank. All right, gentlemen, we let you go on that note and enjoy your evening. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for joining us in the last one hour of...